Good evening, Simon here in uh, beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. As the sun's going down, I wanted to add a third video to this new venture of YouTube videos on, um, on certain topics. The first one's about the microbiome, and this one's going to be about patient compliance. And it's a really important topic, not just for practitioners working with clients, but also for clients working with practitioners, because it's all based around what a client takes home from a practitioner's um, advice. So patient compliance is defined as a patient, um, the patient's effectiveness uh, following um, recommendations or advice. Uh, so the ability to get a client leaving with your advice and getting them to do it, that's the compliance part of it. And for me, over the last few months, I've had some really wonderful dental um, I've had a new dental experience in my life where I've had a lot of work done and patient compliance was the, one of the hugest parts of it and I worked with an amazing doctor called Dr. Ghetto here in Victoria and um, from day one she told me that Simon, you know, I'm going to be doing a lot of work but you need to be doing more and it kind of sparked this compliance idea in, uh, within me. So patient um, compliance as a word, I'm not quite sure I like it, you know, I kind of like something like professional understanding or cooperation or togetherness, something like that kind of, uh, but you can make your own mind up on that one, but patient compliance, togetherness, it's an important and delicate area and the way I see it is that practitioners are the coach's supporting role on the side of the pitch while the clients are on the pitch playing the game um, that's their life and you know it's the result of the game is purely down to what they put into it and you know, how compliant they are with the things they work on with practitioners. And it's an important area to talk about, to understand and focus uh, and work on for all parties involved, with, again, practitioners and clients together. And I read a really cool article last week from the American Academy of Family Physicians, and it's basically tips for generating patient satisfaction and compliance. Uh, which I wanted to share with you, and the article links quite brilliantly. The um, it, it, it links clinical advice and uh, sales people and sales techniques, and it focuses focuses on five key lessons from sales professionals that can strengthen practitioner client relationships, improve uh, patient satisfaction, and enhance uh, patient compliance or professional cooperation. So the first one is uh, establishing a sense of trust. When hearing a recommendation or some advice from a practitioner, the brain filters out that event coming in and adds an emotion to it. Um, if it's unsafe, or it feels unsafe uh, physically or psychologically, the brain initiates an appropriate response to that. And this response interrupts that incoming message um, and it doesn't end up reaching the prefrontal cortex, which is the area of the brain for decision making and um, personality expression. So any interaction perceived as a threat which triggers a response from your brain. From that point on in the conversation, the advice from a practitioner becomes irrelevant and doesn't reach that prefrontal cortex and the information basically isn't absorbed, which is really important. Um, it's the puzzle, so trust. Two, uncovering the client's actual needs. And this is a critical skill to uncover. It's a skill of inquiry. It may seem pretty straightforward to just ask open-ended questions, but it's got so much more to it than that. Um, most client dissatisfaction comes uh, can be traced to inadequate discovery initially of their own needs, and it's really important in sessions become um, game plans for um, meeting needs over time. Thirdly, um, think dialogue, not monologue. So. It's really important to ask the questions, to explore values and make connections. Um, don't just hear and respond. You know, digging deeper, finding out um, how problems affect clients in their day to day, um, how um, how they approach certain problems and the results of that. Supporting their internal knowledge is so huge. You know, nobody knows um, nobody knows your body better than you do. No doctor, no professor, whatever, nobody knows their body better than you do, so, you know, really um, embracing that universal innate knowledge is really, really important. Um, allowing clients to, you know, finish speaking, letting them, you know, holding space for them, 
being comfortable in silence is something that we really learn, which is super important for people to open up and asking, you know, how are these recommendations, how are these things we're talking about, how does it feel for them? Fourth is um, not forcing the close, so don't force the close. So timing is uh, critical. You can't just um, get people to sign on the dotted line before they're ready. If you push it, you can create mistrust or even anger. So, you know, how do you know if the client is ready for this? You know, one technique is called a uh, test close. Um, so, for example, if um, a client is too busy to exercise, a good question would be, it sounds like time is your biggest concern um, when it comes to um, when it comes to exercise. Can we find an exercise plan that doesn't take up too much time? And you know, how can we move forward with that? If this is accepted, you can move towards the close, which would be an uh, um, advice of maybe let's start with um, three times a week to do a fifteen-minute walk. You know, does this sound achievable? Would be a wonderful way to open that up. Uh, and lastly. Um, Always, always following up is number five. <clears throat> so asking clients to follow up with you by email or phone every week, perhaps, or even asking their permission to contact um, to contact them weekly to get updates on goal progression, super, super important. And this overall leads to happier, healthier clients, which is what it's all about. And these tips offer a fresh approach um, uh, for you and for clients, leading to greater understanding of their needs and increasing this patient compliance, togetherness, understanding, and trust really evolves and creates a great foundation to work from from there, which is fantastic. And if you like science and research, there are a few papers uh, about patient compliance that I've read recently, which is really interesting. Um, the first one was on the positive impact of self-monitoring um, blue, uh, blood glucose and diabetes management. The second one was about obese kids, diet, exercise, and actual parental compliance. And thirdly, um, uh, the third one I spoke on about economical status, uh, high blood pressure compliance. And the last one was really interesting about um, how a link between sleep duration and the ability for patients to comply with what they've been working on with their practitioner. That was a really cool one. And I'm gonna finish up by talking about my buddy, uh, Terry Gibbons who is the founder of ResetYourBody.com, I'll put the link up. But he's an expert in health, detox, and resetting the body for optimal function. And I've personally been um, part of the Terry Given experience with the Master Cleanse, which is a really fun thing that I did. But I think arguably with the clients and people that Terry worked with, patient compliance or professional togetherness is so important. Um, and his techniques and his methods are um, explosive and really, really um, personally motivating. And keep an eye out for that video because that's going to be really awesome. But uh, thank you very much and uh, have a lovely evening.